Well, I'm Randy Langford, and I am a law student, uh, almost a former law student of St. Mary's School of Law here in San Antonio, and um, due to graduate on the 16th of May uh, this year. And uh, I guess to start with my story, I have to back up several years to a time when I did something very different than academics or the study of law, and I ranched and trained horses. And after about 20 years of that, my body finally played out, and I thought I might need to shake the cobwebs loose from my mind and see if there was anything left of it. And I went uh, to study my undergraduate studies in Austin at St. Edwards University there. And while I was uh, working on my undergraduate degree, I went to work for some criminal defense attorneys uh, full time as I went to school full time. And uh, basically, just didn't take long before I could see that there was a real problem with our criminal justice system. It didn't seem like anyone who was involved in the process was really satisfied with the outcome, neither the victims nor the persons charged with the offense, whether they in fact you know, committed the, the crime or not. Um, you know, and the, the attorneys, uh, even, even the attorneys weren't really that satisfied with the whole process either, although they were making plenty of money through the process. And um, I went to a uh, CLE function for the Austin Criminal Defense Lawyers Association and heard a woman speak, Ellen Halpert, uh, who is here at the conference now. And she told her story about how she was brutally victimized uh, uh, by someone who had broken into her home. And it had just about ruined her life, uh, affected her in such a way that she couldn't even function, couldn't hold a job, uh, ruined her marriage. She was so traumatized by the, by the event. But she had become, undergone this process called restorative justice. And it had brought healing to her and healing in such a way that she wanted to continue in that work to help other victims who had been the, the victims of crime, whether it be violent crime or property crime or whatever. And so uh, she was speaking to these lawyers in Austin and talking about this thing called restorative justice and I was intrigued by the concept that she described. So I went up to her afterwards, introduced myself as a student who uh, had some aspirations of going to law school and I was interested in the in justice systems in general and this restorative justice that she spoke about. And so she invited me over to her office later on that week. She was uh, the victim services director for the Travis County District Attorney's Office. And I left her office with two boxes full of videos and materials and books and pamphlets on restorative justice. She also put me in contact with uh, one of her friends who worked for the Travis County Sheriff's Office who was about to implement one of the first restorative justice programs in a county jail in the United States. And her name was Cheryl Nayron. And uh, I met with Cheryl soon after that because I wanted some practical experience in this restorative justice. And Ellen had told me really that was the only way I was ever going to really understand what restorative justice was all about even after I had gone through this mountain of literature that she had given me. So I met with Cheryl and she agreed to allow me to volunteer in her program and so I participated in the restorative justice program in the county jail with offenders there. And the experience transformed my life and, uh, and was transformative for many of the participants in the, in the program. I think I participated in two and a half of those programs at the county jail before I graduated uh, from St. Edwards University and then came on to St. Mary's Law School after that. And while at the law school, me and several of my st student friends uh, were somewhat disenchanted by what was being presented to us as justice in uh, opinions in case law books and classes. And just conversations over, you know, adult beverages from time to time, we. Uh, you know, I started sharing with them my experience with this thing called restorative justice and we started toying with the idea about well, why aren't they teaching that in law school? It seems like that would be a good thing for lawyers to be aware of if it in fact is that transformative and can make that kind of difference and bring healing both to victims and offenders. So I approached, um, actually approached uh, the uh, 
St. Mary's obviously is a Catholic university. There is a nun at St. Mary's named Sister Grace, a wonderful human being. And I approached Sister Grace about this, wondering if there was some way that we could begin a program at St. Mary's on restorative justice. She put me in contact with the administrators that I needed to speak with, the faculty members, and soon after that we had uh, organized the Restorative Justice Initiative at St. Mary's. John Sage, who is the founder and CEO of Bridges to Life, who I had become acquaintance with in Austin through the program at the Travis County Jail, I contacted him and he agreed to allow law students to participate in one of his Bridges to Life programs even though they didn't have one in the San Antonio area. But he and I and uh, a couple of other students traveled out to Hondo to the Joe Nye Prison Unit and sat down with the warden and the warden agreed to allow law students to come in there and facilitate a Bridges to Life restorative justice program in the prison. So we thought this would just be a wonderful opportunity for law students, to, uh, first off, to you know, be able to visit a prison and uh, uh, you know, converse with the inmates there and kind of get to see the other side of the story and at the same time to be able to, in, in a pretty safe environment because all this was post-adjudication, to be able to facilitate a restorative justice program and become acquainted with the whole process and the principles. And so we did that. And um, soon after that, we, we started a program in the Bear County Jail. Um, after that, we started some community justice circles. Uh, we also implemented uh, peacemaking circles in a local elementary school with fifth graders. And now the Restorative Justice Initiative at St. Mary's is a very viable, active uh, program that has been embraced by even the president of the, of the school, of the university, and is currently being integrated into the, uh, into the academic program at St. Mary's and the clinical program. So in just a couple of years, it's moved very quickly and with plans to make St. Mary's kind of the epicenter for restorative justice studies and clinical program applications in Texas for law schools in Texas. It's one of the few law schools that really has an active uh, restorative justice program. And so that kind of brings me here. I'm about to graduate and I, the, there are new students who have come along behind those original students who began the Restorative Justice Initiative and they're doing a great job. They, it's grown uh, exponentially under their leadership and I'm stepping out and you know, the new leadership's taking over and the new students and it, it looks like it's uh, uh, something that's going to be at St. Mary's for a long time.